Hi, and welcome to H2.1, the action of forces and torques on rigid objects. In this lesson, students will be able to calculate the torque acting on an object given the force and something called the lever arm. So we started our rotation unit with the rotational kinematics, and we had for every linear uh, physical quantity, there was a rotation physical quantity associated with it, except for time, because time is just time. Uh, but now we're going not rotational kinematics, but rotational dynamics, okay? So when we started the dynamics unit in unit four, we were talking about Newton's laws, and a big thing that we introduced was force, and then we even talked about mass more, right? So for this lesson, we're just gonna talk about the rotational version of force, which is called torque, and you might have heard of torque before. Um, and then we use the Greek letter tau to represent torque, just like we use the letter F to represent force. And then uh, in a subsequent lesson, we'll talk about how the moment of inertia is a way to uh, account for an object's mass in while it's rotating. And then we'll talk about Newton's second law again, and we'll say, okay, torque, is equal to the moment of inertia times your angular acceleration. Just like force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Very nice. So torque, the definition. It says torque is the tendency of a force to rotate the body to which it is applied. Torque depends on the magnitude of the force, the point where the force is applied relative to the axis of rotation, and the direction of the force. Torque is a vector quantity. Uh, net force is to acceleration as net torque is to angular acceleration. Now, there are some units. We saw them on the previous slide, but I wanted to kind of show where the units come from. They come from the formula. Tau is equal to the force times the lever arm. Now, the lever arm is kind of like this part of the definition where it says the point where the force is applied relative to the axis of rotation. Uh, which is measured in meters. So like how far from the axis of rotation is the force being applied? Pretty much. We'll talk about lever arm more. But how far away from the axis? So that's measured in meters, which is why the units, pause the video and think about it. What would the units be if this is measured in meters? It's just a Newton times a meter. A Newton meter. Very good. So torque is measured in Newton meters. Uh, since torque is a vector quantity, we'll use the same um, directions that we've been using. So clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive by convention. So let's talk about this weird lever arm thing, right? This is the L in the formula tau is equal to the force times L, the lever arm. So we'll talk about what this L is. The lever arm is the distance between the line of action, also known as the direction of the force causing the torque, and the axis of rotation measured on a line that is perpendicular to both. It's probably easier just to see what this looks like. So the line of action is not the lever arm. The line of action is the line that acts along the force. So which, if you want, you could pause the video and try to figure out which has the greatest lever arm in this situation? What do you think? You would probably have like a gut feeling about it. So the line of action, you could just draw a line in the problems that you do. If you need to, you could draw a line, a big long line that is in the direction of the force. That makes it easier to see the lever arm. It is the perpendicular distance between the axis of the point that you're rotating around and the line of action all right and needs to be perpendicular to this in this situation it's pretty straightforward but what happens in this second situation can you visualize what the line of action looks like first you draw the line of action now we want to draw a line that's perpendicular to this line okay so the lever arm is definitely perpendicular to the line of action and it also goes through the axis so what do you think that lever arm looks like? If you want, you could pause the video and think about it. 
it's going to be like this. We need a perpendicular lever arm. The lever arm is perpendicular to the line of action, and it also goes through our axis right here. So the lever arm cannot be like at some weird angle like this. That This is not a 90 degree angle. It needs to be 90 degrees. All right, last example here. What do you think the lever arm looks here? Well, the line of action is here. The lever arm is right there. So to answer the question, that's a 90 degree angle, right? Answer the question, which has the greatest lever arm? Which line is the largest? This line here, okay? Then it says, assuming the forces are the same magnitude, all of these are the same magnitude of force, right? Because force is still a part of this. Which has the greatest torque, okay? It's going to be the same one since it's the largest lever arm and the force is all the same. You go with the one that has the largest lever arm. That'll give you the most torque. Nice. So critical thinking before we do an example, which we will, uh, can you exert a force on this object but have no torque? What do you think? Pause the video. Think about it. Well, what if the force was acting in this direction? Your line of action passes through the axis. So how big is your lever arm? What is the distance between the line of action and the axis? Or is there a distance between those two things? There's not, right? So the lever arm is zero meters because the line of action passes through the axis. The distance between the line of action and the axis is zero meters. Therefore, the torque is equal to zero newton meters because you don't have a lever arm, right? There's no, I should highlight it in red like we've been doing. There's no lever arm there. There's no distance between the line of action of the force and the axis. You're not gonna, basically, are, are you gonna, if this was the door seen from above, are you going to rotate the door at all? No, you're just gonna push it into the axis if it was exactly perfect. What if you exerted a force outward? Are you gonna rotate that door? Is there gonna be a torque? No, because again, the lever arm is zero. But as soon as you move a little bit like this, even if it's really small, okay, then your line of action does not pass through your axis and it would look like this. This is the lever arm now, okay? Because it's 90 degrees to that line of action. And you would have some kind of torque. The door would rotate. Um, if it rotates this way, is that positive or negative? That is going to be counterclockwise, so it's positive. All right, so where is the torque formula? All right, we have it listed right here. Now there is a formula for torque. That's the force times the lever arm. And then we already saw this one. This is Newton's second law, but for rotation. So there's two formulas on here for torque. And depending on what they give you in the problem, uh, you'll use different ones. There's also torque in this equation. Mm, 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 what is that? Does that look familiar? Whoa. All right, so let's do an example. It says a force of 50 newtons is applied to the end of a door whose width is 0.9 meters. So that means this distance right here is 0 0.9 meters. The angle between the force and the door is 60 degrees as shown in the diagram. What is the magnitude and direction of the torque exerted by the force on the door? Good question. Okay, so the first thing we should definitely write down is that the force is 50 newtons. The second thing I'm looking for is, do they tell me what the lever arm is? And I make my L's like this, because if I drew like just an L like that, it looks like the number one, but you make your L's however you want. Um, so do we know the lever arm? Is it 0 0.9 meters? Hmm, not sure about that yet. But we do know that we're looking for the torque. Okay, so what do you think? How are we gonna find this lever arm? Well, again, the line of action passes through here. 
And although line of action also starts with an L, it is not the lever arm. The lever arm is the perpendicular distance from the line of action to the axis. I tried to make this so that, yep, that's a perpendicular angle right there. Okay, so we have a triangle. Oh, man. You know I like right triangles. Look at that nice right triangle. So what we're really looking for is the lever arm so that we can plug it in our torque formula. How would you find this distance, right? We know the angle. And what would you say this 0 0.9 meters if, is if this is a right triangle? That 0.9 meters is what? The hypotenuse. Let's get hype for the hypotenuse. And then what is the lever arm in this case? Because the angle is here. This is opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. In this case, it's opposite. Okay, so you have to look at your right triangle for all the different instances and think about that on top of the fact that you have to remember, okay, line of action, lever arm, and then you do your trig stuff. So don't don't let the trig stuff get in your way. This is We've seen this type of stuff before. The new stuff is line of action, lever arm, 90 degrees. Okay, so we could uh, calculate it. Uh, with, let's do the old school way. Opposite hypotenuse, that's sine where I come from. And then you just plug in. Sine is 60 degrees is equal to your lever arm divided by 0 0.9. And your lever arm is equal to, now make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So the lever arm isn't 0 0.9. It's 0 0.78, 7794, whatever. All right. So, yep, nice. Now we know the lever arm. Meters, meters, meters. Uh, don't want to get points off for units. So then you got to remember your units on top of everything else now. And what is our formula for the torque? All right. And the way I make my tau, if you never made a Greek letter tau, I just kind of make like, a little thing like that, like you're going to make a pi symbol almost, but instead of pi, you just go like a little bit like that. I don't know. It's not perfect. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but gets the job done. So the torque is equal to your force times your lever arm. And we said that the force was equal to 50 newtons and the lever arm we calculated 7.78 meters. So the torque is equal to about 39 and then what are the units for torque? It's just a Newton times a meter, a Newton meter. Okay, so the torque is 39 Newton meters. All right, um, again, the reason we didn't use the 0.9 is because the force wasn't acting this way. If the force was acting this way, then yes, the perpendicular distance between the line of action and the axis would be that 0.9. But I made it at a weird angle like that on purpose so we could get some practice thinking about, oh yeah, the lever arm is actually kind of a thing. I can't just plug in the numbers because uh, sometimes they'll try to trick me. Okay, nice. So let's see if we could do number two. Uh, if you want, you could try it on your own. It says, two children hang by their hands from the same tree branch. The branch is straight and grows out from the tree trunk at an angle of 27 degrees above the horizontal. That's this angle here. One child with a mass of 38 kilograms is hanging 1.15 meters along the branch from the tree trunk. So that's the distance that they're showing there. Okay. What is the magnitude and direction of the torque exerted on the branch by the child? Let's see. Uh, you could pause the video if you want and uh, figure it out. Okay, so the first thing I would do is draw a better picture than what they have here. I mean, it's nice and artistic and everything, but let's see what we really have going on. We have the tree trunk, which is making a 27 degree angle, and we have the force this person's hanging straight down, right? 
So what is the, it's the force due to gravity, right? We're going to have to, oh, wow. We're bringing in some stuff from unit four. We learned about mass and weight. We're going to have to do our old friend FG equals MG. And they're looking for the torque, okay? So what we can do now that we have a more simplified drawing here is we can draw in, oh, what, I forgot. This is important. This is 1.15 meters that's this distance along the tree trunk we said right okay so good so that gives us some more information so we could find the lever arm so again this is your line of action the action being taken place here is the force like the you're exerting a force that's the action this is the line along which the action takes place all right so that is the line of action it is not the lever arm the lever arm is the perpendicular distance between the line of action and the axis that it's trying to rotate around. That's why you shouldn't really be hanging from trees like this, because there's an axis that the branch is trying to rotate around. And if these kids are get too heavy, you're going to break the limb. Like, that's not cool, right? But the limb it would rotate this way, all right, around that axis. So where is the lever arm it's the perpendicular distance between the line of action and the axis this is perpendicular this is your lever arm okay so it's important to draw that picture so you get get an understanding yeah this number is not the lever arm we don't plug it in to our formula we're gonna have to find it first all right so a um, couple different ways you can handle this Let's let's do it piece by piece. All right. So first of all, we don't know what the force is, but we know the person's mass. Um, and if we wanted to, we could write the given. I like to write the givens on the side first. Helps keep me organized. I do it every single time. And then we could even like the distance is 1.15 meters. If you want to write it like that, it's definitely not the lever arm. The lever arm. We're looking for that. Uh, we don't know the force. So we got to find that. And then we can answer the question, what is the torque? Okay, so we got to do some different stuff first. You could do it in one line if you wanted to. Should we do it in one line? That's a little crazy. Maybe we should. The torque is equal to the force times the lever arm. Well, the force is equal to your mass times your acceleration due to gravity. Oh my gosh, don't get points off for that. Okay, got to make sure you get the units in there. So this is 38 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's the force. Oh, you know what I should do? I'll make it color coded like that, right? So, and then I'll even do it on the side. FG is equal to MG, right? That's what we're doing. FG is equal to 38 times 9.8. Nicey nice. And you get a number, right? Whatever it is. 372.4 newtons. That's the force, right? But we're just doing it all in one line. Now for the lever arm, okay, take a look at our right triangle. How would you handle that? Here's our right triangle. We're just doing trig, right? Well, where's the angle? Okay, and where is the lever arm? Is the lever arm opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse to that angle? It is adjacent. And what is this one? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? That's the hypotenuse. Okay, adjacent and hypotenuse. Are we going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? We'll use cosine, and you can even do the shortcut formula. You're just going to do 1.15 cosine 27 degrees. Yeah, because it looks like this. When you cross multiply, you get the adjacent is equal to your hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, which is the 1.15 times cosine 27. Nice. So your torque ends up being 372.4 newtons times 1.0247 meters which turns into just 
382 when you round it. Uh, and then what are your units for torque? That's a Newton meter. And they do ask for the direction. I forget if they asked it in example one. I might, I might have skipped over it. But uh, anyway, this is your axis. They're trying to pull the branch this way. All right. So and if this is like the branch, let's make the branch uh, blue so you can see. All right. Here's the blue branch. Which direction would that blue branch rotate? All right, it's going to try to rotate this way, right? Not this way. So what direction is this curved? Is that clockwise or counterclockwise? That is going to be counterclockwise. So that's going to be positive. 382 point, uh, whatever, 382 Newton meters. Uh, and you could even say counterclockwise if you wanted to like that. Very nice. All right, two critical thinking questions real quick. So sometimes, even with a wrench, one cannot loosen a nut that is frozen tightly to a bolt. I actually used this when I was um, changing my tires once. I couldn't get the nuts off of the bolt with the, with the wrench that I had in my trunk, but I did have a pipe. It says it is often possible to loosen the net, the nut by slipping one end of a long pipe over the wrench handle and pushing at the other end of the pipe, like that. With the aid of the pipe, does the applied force produce a smaller torque, a greater torque, or the same torque on the nut? What do you think? Pause the video and think about it. Well, hopefully you said, if I exert the force way out here, that means my lever arm between my axis, my lever arm is way longer now. So the torque produced is greater, not because the force is greater. I could only exert so much force. When I was uh, changing my tire, I literally had all my body weight on the wrench. Uh, I couldn't exert more of a force. So I had to increase the lever arm, which ended up giving me enough torque to rotate the frozen on nut, even though the force was the same. So it's good to know about the lever arm. Sweet. All right, one more critical thinking question. It says, the drawing shows an overhead view of a horizontal bar that is free to rotate about an axis perpendicular to the screen. Two forces act on the bar and they have the same magnitude. However, one force is perpendicular to the bar, and the other makes it angle phi with respect to it. The angle can be 90 degrees, 45 degrees, or zero degrees. That's this angle over here. Rank the values of phi according to the magnitude of the net torque, the sum of the torques. So we didn't talk about net torque yet, but it's kind of leading into the next thing. We have talked about net force, already so maybe you have an idea of what net torque is that the two forces produce largest net torque first so rank these angles which with which would give you the greatest net torque when you add the torque from this force plus the torque from that one when you add those two torques together pause the video and think about it well, hopefully you said, okay, if it's like this, 90 degrees, and it's the same force, the same magnitude of the force, is that bar going to rotate anywhere? No, the net torque is zero. So 90 degrees is going to be last on our list. What happens if the force is exerted so that it's zero degrees? This is not producing any torque. So when you add zero to this, that's, that's a, you're going to get the largest amount of torque possible. Okay. So the zero degrees gives you the maximum amount of torque, which means 45 is right in the middle, kind of shown here. If your torque is here, that means your lever arm is not as big as it would be if this is your lever arm here. 
right, for 90 degrees. So it's all about how big is that lever arm. This is the lever arm when it's 45. This is the lever arm when it's 90. And then when it's this way, the lever arm when it's zero degrees is equal to zero meters. So we're looking at which one gives us the greatest lever arm and in effect the greatest torque for this but this is working against this one so when you add the torques together this torque cancels out that one right and then this torque there's no torque being produced here so this isn't being canceled out at all which means that's the greatest net torque so zero degrees first then 45 then 90. that was a tricky one Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.